Welcome back, everyone, to Issues of Faith. We have with us uh, Dr. Clay Stoffer. He's a senior pastor out at Woodmont Christian Church, teaches a class at Vanderbilt, wrote a book on this next subject we're going to talk about, preaching politics. And, and we're talking about churches in a post-corona world. We've gone through some of the things you mentioned in an article that was in the Tennessee. And, and one of the things you say, churches that can successfully navigate the contentious political divide will draw new people. And so there's a lot, of, there's a lot to take in there. No doubt, when you talk about the, the wave of, of you know, problems this year, political divide has been a major part of it. How do churches navigate this contentious political divide? Well, I think the churches need to try to become part of the solution and not be part of the problem. Um, I believe in a concept called Big Tent Christianity, where at least in the Christian church, we welcome people of all different backgrounds, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, and we need to keep the focus on Christ and not on a political candidate or party. But I've got to be honest that the last couple of years have shaken the tent poles of Big Tent Christianity. It's been very difficult uh, because the rhetoric has been so toxic, the divisions have been so strong, and there are even people that are in the same political party who do not see eye to eye. And, and so what, what I think churches are called to do is be a place where people can come together listen to and respect each other, acknowledge that we're not going to agree on on everything for sure, but we have to have a place where we can talk about some of the issues of the day, such as uh, health care, uh, immigration, um, other things that seem to be divisive uh, in our society. And, and in this, when it's describing your class, you talk about um, faith, politics, and the rapid polarization in American culture, and how the digital age has ushered in unprecedented anger, incivility, and even a crisis of truth. And so, yeah, when you say shaking the tent poles, I, I agree. And 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 it sounds good. We've got to we've got to be civil, and we've got to you know be a place where where lots of people can come together. But I I worry that that we are splintering, and and I wonder. You know, again, what can we do about it? it? I guess that's my question. Yeah, so I'm a part of this uh, this project at Vanderbilt uh, that's basically called, it's a project on, uh, on, on unity uh, and democracy. And so uh, John Meacham, uh, Governor Bill Haslam, uh, uh, a couple uh, other professors. Um, uh, there's a professor that worked in the Obama White House, Grace Sasser. Many people know are all working on this. And I wrote a piece talking about how specifically churches can step up to this challenge. Um, and, and I think, you know, that we have to get to a place where, first of all, we acknowledge that everybody is not going to agree on every subject. And, and this, there are so many churches in our culture that are either all red or all blue. And frankly, I see that as part of the problem. Uh, my church is purple. I've got red and blue and, you know, everything in between. And I think we need more purple churches because when you have a church that's full of people that think and vote and, and say the same things alike, you know, uh, you, they're just going to become echo chambers. And we have too many echo chambers. In terms of the digital age, Ben, I'm convinced that the people will type things on a screen or on social media that they would never think about saying to somebody's face. And so what's happened is... Uh, people hide behind the screen, they say very toxic, awful things, and then somebody has to come back with, uh, to, to you know, take them on. And then it, the cycle goes from there. I agree, and it's, and it's crazy to see that. The other thing that happens is this, and, and you've written about this, our culture struggle for the truth. We've, we've kind of lost sight of what is even the truth. We can't even agree on basic facts, and that makes it difficult to begin conversations somehow. Yeah, John Gear, a uh, political scientist and uh, dean at Vanderbilt, part of this project on unity in American democracy, one of his biggest concerns is that we no longer live in a society that is tethered to evidence. That it used to be that, you know, if you were going to make a point, you had to prove it. Now somebody can just make something up, and if they repeat it over and over and over again, then people just believe that it's true. And, and that is a very dangerous place to live. 
when you don't have to be tethered to the evidence anymore. And so that's a, a big part of this project is how can we get back to a society that is tethered to the evidence when it comes to American democracy and our, our search for unity. And so when it comes to the truth, the church, what role does the church play in, in getting us to, I guess, be more civil and at least agree on a set of facts? Well, you've heard a lot about the concept of the postmodern society. When I was at Princeton Seminary, we talked about that all the time, where you're going to be doing ministry into a postmodern world. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that everybody's got their own truth, and, and, and there are no shared truths. And I really didn't understand that for a long time until recently, in this kind of the last couple of years, where you literally have people living in completely different realities, and they don't share the same facts and they don't share the same truth. So I think that the church and leaders in the church need to be uh, about preaching the truth, teaching the truth, encouraging people to seek the truth. Um, th that should not be uh, 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 controversial. Um, that's something that we should all treasure is, is the, the facts. You know, somebody, I think Mooneyhan once said, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Well, a lot of people feel like they're entitled to their own facts, and that's a big problem in our culture. And Jesus was pretty explicit on this, right? The truth will set us free. I mean, the truth we we have the truth is really important, and we can't just all be off on our Facebook pages thinking our own version of the truth. Yeah, Jesus said in John's Gospel, uh, chapter eight, he said, "You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will make you free." Um, there's a guy that teaches up at uh, NYU that I, I've been following his research for years he's named Jonathan Haidt. Um, and, and, and he said something recently that really stuck with me. He said that for some reason last year, whether it's because churches were closed or I don't know what, what, why this happened, but for many people, they have replaced faith with politics. And somebody once said, when you mix faith and politics, what you get is politics. Um, I think churches are called to bring us back to the truth, to focus on Jesus Christ, who is the truth, and then to encourage people to sort out in their life what is the truth and what is, uh, what is a lie. Fascinating. So a minute left, um, kind of to wrap all of this up, churches have a very important role to play. Um, they've been through a tough time, but kind of wh where, where do you see things going in the next year? Well, I do really believe things are getting better. And so I think that this spring and this summer, uh, as more people get vaccinated, uh, as the weather gets better, you're going to see more and more people coming back to, to the churches. However, the challenge is going to be when somebody's been out of the habit for a year, you know, that they've been doing other things on Sundays or they're watching the service at their leisure, getting them back into a you know routine of worship and Sunday school and those kind of things, you know, that might take a really long time. But I think the churches need to remain hopeful. Uh, I think the churches need to continue to view this as an opportunity, as a time to reset. And um, and there's going to be a lot of, uh, of lingering effects uh, of this pandemic um, for many years, not just the grief of the families that have lost loved ones, but just the ongoing ripple effects from this pandemic. And I think churches will play a very important role in not only fostering civility, uh, but also in helping our society heal. Uh, because there's going to need to be a lot of healing uh, that needs to take place as we as we move through uh, the rest of this pandemic. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's it's always great to have you on. Clay Stoffer, thank you. Thanks for coming on Issues of Faith. Thank you, Ben. All right. We will. Uh, well, I just thank you for watching. That's the end of Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.